Exciting stuff. There's a lot happening in town. There is a lot happening, and that video was a, a blast to prepare. I will say this, and I probably shouldn't say it, and I'm going to start <laughs> off right. In 10 seconds we, we, in. We did have, we did have a, a blooper video that you will never see. Uh, that it's like Mission Impossible, it has disintegrated. So it was a fun to prepare this. Yeah. There's always the Freedom of, of Information Act. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Won't happen. Um, if you want to learn a little bit more, the, the city's gone to great lengths to prepare this annual report. This is a magnificent uh, document. If you ever want to know, if you get questioned on why Tyler, this is a great resource to have. So they're available. If you haven't picked one up, they're available on, when you exit. So uh, great stuff. So it's been a year. It's, it's been a great year. Uh, we, we have a, a fabulous council. We, we have chemistry. Not always great, but we have chemistry. <laughs> uh, and that's a starting point. But I do want to recognize our council, if I may, uh, and, and stand up, wave, and then once again we'll applaud when, when uh, we get done. And I want to recognize a couple other people as well. But, but first, for District 1, Councilman Stuart Haney. You got one friend out there. <laughs> uh, District 2, Councilman Broderick McGee. <laughs> uh, District 4, Councilman Mayor Pro Tem, James Wynn. Uh, District 5, Councilman Bob Westbrook. And for District 6, Councilman Brad Curtis. Now, I also want to uh, recognize our city manager, Ed, at the office I call him Ed Bruchard. But it's not his name, so I'm going to say Ed Broussard. Ed, will you stand up? And I also want to just acknowledge the city staff. Can y'all stand up? You know, if it, if it wasn't for the city staff, the council would be able to do nothing. So uh, my, I tip my hat off to, to all of them and for what you do and, and for making us look good. Uh, you do a great job. And I've also got to recognize, I, I recognized these, this group last year, and I was, I was a little bit sorry I did, but, but I'm going I'm to go ahead and do it again. Uh, my, my coffee group, y'all got to stand up and, and wave, just wave everybody, y'all stand up. <laughs> we, we have met uh, for over a decade, uh, from 8 to 9, Monday through Friday. And as many of you know, uh, Monday, through, uh, Monday and Fridays, we cannot discuss city business. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we can. So uh, it, they always have a lot of input. If you don't like something we have done, it's probably because they recommended it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to save the best for last. My wife, Chelly, just wave. Yeah. After spending... Uh, six years on council and now the second term as mayor. Uh, you've always been supportive and uh, well, most of the, t most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, you've always been great and, and behind every man is a, is a great woman. So thank you for, for what you do and thanks for sticking with me. She, uh, she stands behind you, cuts your hair regularly too, right? And uh, that's she, she does, dangerous for she you. Does, as a matter of fact, in the storm we had, uh, gosh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, Mark Skirto was on TV talking about, you know, she, you know, get cover, uh, the storm's down the street. Well, Shelly's cutting my hair. And they were having a glass of wine, and we're just relaxed. And, and Mark says, well, it's getting really close. It's, it's at Earl Campbell Parkway. And Shelly goes, I'll, um, I've got to finish your haircut. So <laughs> she, she continues to, to cut my hair. And before you know it, the storm has passed. And uh, I'm just fortunate I don't have a pair of scissors stuck through my neck, but yeah. <laughs> we, we, did, we did make it through the storm. Well, she had a, you had a, an opportunity for an out there. If you... <laughs> yes. Well, I, you, you mentioned the staff, uh, the, the team that is surrounding you and the council. Uh, I mean, unpaid, you guys are unpaid. The, the staff obviously is paid. Um, a lot of people think the mayor's role is kind of ceremonial. Is that how do you how do you 
position that? Well, people do. No, not everybody. My brother, for one, thinks it's ceremony. <laughs> he thinks all we do is, is proclamations and cut ribbons and hug babies and all that. And it's, it's really not. I mean, standing, sitting up in front of 600 people speaking is, is hardly ceremonial. Uh, I love doing it. But, you know, even having a, a city council meeting, and I never really realized what it took to, to run a council meeting. And you're up there, and, and you've got to be so focused and, and have clarity, and, and it's not a time to be thinking about, you know, tea times on the golf course. And what you really do, you become a quarterback and a referee and, and a cheerleader all at the same time. But, but you just you, you don't have time to, to – you can't lose it. And, uh, but it, it's, it's always turned out well. The ones that are hardest are the ones that are three hours long, and, and you've got – something that's a contentious item and uh, just to stay stay focused. Now, I will say this, uh, a year and a half ago, I started taking Prevagen and and I, I promise you, it works, okay? That's great. And, and, I, and I will say this, the other thing that, that, that makes you realize that it's not ceremonial is, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about vision for the future and, and where's the city going and, uh, that's not something that has nothing to do with ribbon cutting or proclamations. It's something that takes a, it takes a lot of effort, and uh, it, it's just part of the vision for the future. And the last thing I'll say is I like being accessible, and people call me all the time. And I'll, I'll do this reluctantly, maybe not. <laughs> but if anybody ever has an issue, you know, I have coffee at the plaza from 8 to 9. You're always welcome to stop by. But also, if you ever want to send me an email or whatever, I promise I'll respond. And it's dwarren at tylertexas.com. So always feel free to send me an email. I'll be more than happy to, to visit with you about whatever your concerns or needs are. I, and, and you are accessible. Uh, that is the great thing. I think all the council members are accessible. And while there is so much work that goes on based on what you guys are coming up on strategic planning and guidance, there is some fun in there, too. You're going to... Uh, everything, if everything works right, you're going to give Fritz Hager a, a, a proclamation coming up in a day or so? Well, actually, we're going to do it tomorrow night. He's going to be at True Vines at 8 o'clock, and so uh, we'll, we'll read a, I'm going to do a proclamation on behalf of the city, and Neil Franklin will be doing a resolution uh, for the county, and, uh, you know, proclamations and resolutions are very exciting, and, and uh, the city manager worked on this one and had it one and a half pages long, which has now been edited down to three quarters of a page. Uh, but, but the whole Fritz Hager thing it has been a, a, a fun exercise. Mm -hmm. in about 10 days, 10 days ago, when Fritz was in the top five and about to make it, we thought, to the top three, we met with a group of people uh, here in Tyler, uh, musicians, uh, lighting people, sound people, and uh, we were on the Zoom call with the people from American Idol. And the plan was, uh, how do we do this homecoming parade for, for Fritz three, and in the course of just a few hours, we had come up with this plan for a parade down Broadway, a, a big function and concert at Burkeville Park, and it all came together. And I went back to the office and got on the phone, and within an hour, had raised enough money to cover all the cost. I mean, the city was not going to pay for it. American Idol wasn't going to pay for it, but this that, that's just how much the city's been behind uh, Fritz and. Uh, you know, it's been fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, I think tomorrow morning he's going to be on Kelly and Regis. Is that what you call it? Kelly and Ryan. Oh, Kelly and Ryan. It's 9 a.m. Is that <laughs> Monday through Friday? Is that on ABC? ABC? Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm, <laughs> We're I'm put a TV I'm, guide on the back <laughs> of this. For yeah. Next year, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I'm usually working at that time. I'm not at home watching you're TV. It's, it's your coffee hour. So. Oh, that's, oh yeah. sorry. Um, but Fritz, Fritz three has been great for the city, and, and I, I know he's not here, but and I know Junior's not here. But I do. I want to give it up for Fritz three. Yep. It is exciting, and what a neat uh, journey that's been to see him really flourish in that environment. So really neat. Okay. So, well, this I can't believe this. You've, you're you're on your second term already, which is. Uh, amazing. Martin Hines wouldn't give, give up the keys uh, for an extra few months. No, he was anxious to get, to get out and give them to you, but COVID interrupted that. But 
Uh, this is the first term for you as mayor, uh, first term for Stuart and James and Brad as councilmen. What have you learned? Well, the most important thing is is in relationships, and I, and I use that word a lot. But with with these three, you know, I, I've known them for years, but not in this environment. So, you know, it's getting just to know each other and uh, getting to, to trust each other, uh, joking with one another, uh, mostly in fun. Uh, but but it's just it really is getting to know each other and in. It's like I mentioned before, it's about chemistry and uh, the chemistry works and uh, we don't always vote the same, which is fine. It's okay if they're wrong. Uh, <laughs> no, just kidding, guys. But no, it, it's just fun to get to know them and, and uh, work with them. Yeah. All right, so some nuts and bolts. Uh, we went through the, uh, the census and the redistricting exercise. Uh, any surprises as we've gone through that? I, I, th I would say it's a, it was a big surprise. Uh, I don't think everyone was counted. Mm -hmm. I think our, our population said 106,000, and I really thought it would be closer to 115,000. You know, the city receives state and federal funding based on numbers, and so you, you hate that, that the numbers were low, but, but it, it is what it is, and so we'll deal with it. You know, as far as redistricting, uh, we did have to make some changes. Uh, South Tyler, as, as you all know, grows and the, the purpose of redistricting is, is having a balanced districts and having them uh, relatively the same size within 10 percent so we changed up district three district four and a few others to, to make them more similar in, in size and when we started this process we thought it was going to be a little adversarial and we had some groups that that uh, we we thought were going to be uh, challenging and uh, what I realized was we had so many public meetings and so many times and that people had the opportunity to, to voice their opinion that it was extremely transparent. And uh, that's really what all, that's all people wanted was transparency and the, the ability to speak and, and speak what's on their mind. And so we, we changed the districts, we did the redistricting and, and it was a, a lot less eventful than I thought it was gonna be. Yep, it is a process though. Mm -hmm. So Tyler, obviously growing, excited to see the growth uh, in, in the city proper and county and all that. Why are people moving here? What are you guys learning? Well, it, it, it's a sense of community. Uh, Tyler's a, a fun place to live. It's, it's got a great quality of life. You know, our economy's strong. Uh, we have lean government. We have, as everybody knows, we've got low property tax, uh, and that causes a lot of people to move here. We added 8,800 jobs between December of 2020 and December of 2021, which is 8.3 percent job growth, which which is which is pretty fantastic. And the city of Tyler was first in job growth among the top top 10 metro areas. So you know the city of Tyler is is booming. You know prior to COVID, unemployment was 3.1. Now we're at 3.5. Uh, this time last year we we're at 5.6. So you know, we're growing, we're expanding. Uh, and one other thing that, that's fun about what's going on in the city of Tyler, and I mentioned this last year, and I, I hope I didn't mention their name. I think I may have. But we do have, this year we've, we've got competition in the broadband sector. Yeah, anybody, anybody that's like a good that? thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, competition's good. And uh, I, I think some of the competitors have uh, already got customers online. And so it's just good to see uh, what's going on with broadband. Inside the city limits, I realize that we need it rurally and, and, and so forth. But uh, there's big things happening with, in the broadband sector. So there's, just, there's a lot going on. Yep, so people are coming here. It is great to see. The, the Ed and his team love this, the uh, additional revenue coming in from some of the taxes and everything. But, uh, how does this, that, that puts a strain on the city. How does the city deal that, with that rapid growing need with infrastructure? Well, it's kind of like the story of the rabbit and the hare, and you know who won the, you know who won the story, and, uh, and it wasn't the rabbit. And so it's, it's slow and constant growth. And, and that was know, a rabbit and the turtle, right? Rabbit, yeah. Yeah. But the, but the turtle I, won. Yeah, the turtle won. <laughs> He's rabbit trying, hair. He's trying, okay, you're sound like, you sound like Mike Patterson. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, you know, we, we've got a lot going on. To, uh, 
we're, we're spending $250 million on our, our uh, wastewater system over 10 years, and we're halfway there. But that, that's a lot of money. We spend $5 million a year on streets, and I just got some of these numbers. $2 million a year replacing our water lines, 9.6 over the last five years on our water plants, 5 million over the last five years on our wastewater plants. So we're making huge investments in, into our infrastructure. And as the video showed, half and Associates is working on a drainage uh, uh, plan or drainage study. And the, the thing that happens with all this growth is you got all this concrete and water doesn't soak into concrete. And so what you end up with are all these drainage issues all over town. And they identified 22 erosion projects that are gonna cost seven million to fix, 36 capital, and, or 36, uh, capital improvement projects for just drainage problems, which is another $8 million. So what we'll do is we're gonna take the top 10 erosion problems, the top 10 drainage problems, add them to the capital improvement list and find the funding and start working on them. So there, there definitely are challenges uh, with that. Yep. And, and we've got, when we have a stormwater master plan, that tells you, again, huge need uh, to have water, a water plan, a strategy. It is, uh, it's a huge need. Uh, and then traffic on infrastructure, other challenges there. Uh, traffic is always a, a that's tough. As a matter of fact, traffic is one of the reasons why our coffee group no longer discusses city issues on Monday and Friday. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it was mentioned just about every day. And, and one of the men in my coffee group, Stan, I uh, got there one morning and, and, and he, he kept, every day he brought this traffic. And I'm like, stop it. And, and so finally one morning, I, I, I totally lost it. And this is a friend. And, and I lose it with my friend about traffic. So, uh, it, it, it's, sorry, Stan. <laughs> but but it, it is a problem, and, and we, we're adding all this new software. We're adding cellular technology at 127 different spots around the town. We, we working with TxDOT and got a grant from them to do crosswalks and lighting, and so we're gonna save $2.1 million there, but we are investing so much in traffic, and I've got to tell you, last year I told you that, that if you get on Broadway and you drive between 37 and 42, you can make it all the way through the green lights. That's if you're not texting and all that kind of stuff. And I still feel firmly that, that you can go all the way down there if you drive that speed. But based on our traffic engineer, and I believe him, because of the changes that have been made, there is a 30% reduction in wait time from, from Grande down to Cumberland Village. I know you guys probably don't believe me, but I, there, we, we have it on a computer that says there's the 30% reduction. And so now we're doing timing from Grande North up uh, into the Isaiah District, and we're doing timing over on Front Street and Fifth Street. And so hopefully you'll see some improvements in, in uh, the traffic. Now, one thing I will say is if you're gonna get on Broadway, I'm, looking, I'm not looking at you, if you're gonna get on Broadway at eight in the morning or five in the afternoon, you're gonna be in traffic. And it doesn't matter how you time the lights, it doesn't matter what you do, you're gonna be in traffic. So just, you know, find alternate routes. We've been warned, that's it. It, it sounds like the coffee group needs their own email. Is there a D list <laughs> that we can publish? And uh, well, they, they've got they, your ear, it sounds they, like. They, they give they me a lot of input. On it. And, and most time I like it, but sometimes not so much. There you go. So we've got people moving here. Businesses are following or leading that charge as well. Does the city incentivize businesses to come here? We, we do, and, and so many people want us to do, do it in a different way. We don't pay cash to get, a, to get a, a business here. And I'm not saying that Costco's coming or Costco's not coming, but people always hear that if you pay Costco $2 million in cash, they'll come to your community. Well, I'll say right now, we're not gonna give them $2 million in cash. Would we work an incentive to, to, to possibly get them here? Maybe, and maybe we're talking about that. But uh, it, you know, incentives are offered and we've worked on different projects. You know, the, the amount of incentives we've given are like on one hand. We, we just don't do it all the time. And you just gotta be careful how you do do it. And we worked with a, a, a company recently on a project and we started off with this, 
this first incentive, which is called a, a PID or a public improvement district. And we really thought it would help pay for the infrastructure. And then this company said, well, we need a TERS on top of the PID, which is a tax increment refinancing zone. And so they were stacking these incentives on top of each other. And so we start doing the paperwork and you realize if you over incentivize something, all of a sudden we can't even pay to have police out there. We can't pay to have fire out there. What if we have to build another fire station? So you can over incentivize something to where it's no longer a good deal for the city. So we, we are very careful. We realize it's a very good tool. And uh, we've got companies that, IT companies, data companies, we've got new people that are coming to town that have an interest in Tyler that we do talk to them about incentives, but we're careful. Yeah, that's smart stewardship on that. Um, so again, on kind of on the growth, housing has been a, become a national problem as far as home inventory, worker availability, again, a challenge. What does this look like? from the, uh, the city's level? Well, Gary Barber is here, right? And, and these numbers came, we didn't come up with these numbers, but the average home value rose from $218,000 in 2021 to $260,000 in 2022, which is, which is a huge jump. Mm -hmm. And we have a huge migration from other states that are coming to Tyler, which, which challenges uh, so much. You know, the new medical school, it's going to create new growth, and we're going to talk about that a little more later, but it's going to uh, cause some growth. Uh, people that are building new houses, you've got uh, inflation, you've got supply issues that we're dealing with, annexation, uh, it, it, which is a challenge as well. You know, now we can't just go and annex property adjacent to our city limits. Uh, unless we have, unless it's just totally voluntary and, and we can do that. But if, if we try to bring in a neighborhood or bring in a, a commercial area, I mean, we have to actually have an election. So, you know, that, that puts a strain on growing your city just because you can only go so much. So, uh, you know, th there are those challenges. As far as people, you know, help, you know, people that, that work for us, you know, the people in the, that are working for the city, we're competing with the private sector. And so we, we have to continually do things to make them want to come to Tyler. And if you're living in Mineola and you're coming to Tyler, and you, you can take a left and go to Longview or take a right and go to Tyler, we've got to make sure that, that the pay for, for staff and, and so forth is is something that makes them want to take a right turn and, and, and come to Tyler. Yep. And there's also, there's really a concerted effort with the city on housing though to, uh, to make sure that you're doing what we can as a municipality to create some inventory. Well, it, that is, it is a, a challenge. And as you know, all you realtors out there, you know, we, we have a, a housing shortage. And once again, it's hard to, if you can't annex property, where are you going to build? Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is infill building. And we have builders that have found a niche, and, and they go in, they find five acres or 20 acres and build streets, and they come in. And, you know, one company I'm thinking about, they're building 1,500 square foot houses, and and they're finding their niche. And But there's only so much property in inside the city limits. And as I mentioned before, with inflation and supply issues, that's, that, that's causing the, uh, some difficulty in, in building houses. The, we've got the Hidden uh, Palace project that was shown on the, on the video up by fire station number one, and, and it's, it's 11 homes that, that are affordable and they're for low and middle income people. And this, these houses were built with federal money, but you know, North Tyler, it, it, there's areas in North Tyler and areas in East Tyler that are little gyms, they're, they're great areas, and, and we're going to see more building up in those areas. Yep. All right, you touched on this just briefly, three point, whatever, four or five percent unemployment. That workforce uh, search is a challenge. What's the city doing to attract and retain that quality workforce? Well, I, I mentioned some of that already, but the number one thing for me is, and for this I don't even need notes. You know, for me, it, it's, it's, it's morale uh, for people to want to come to work. 
And how do you make them want to come to work? And and it's working. And it's, it's back to the chemistry of, of your employees and making them want to take that right turn versus the left turn to, to come here. And, you know, just one example of, of when you talk about morale and and retaining people with the city is we, we have this program. And at first I thought, this is the silliest thing I've ever heard. It's bring your baby to work. And, and you think, bring your baby to work? It, it works. You know, what they did is, is, you know, you have this new baby and, and you take your baby to work and you talk your coworkers into holding the baby for you. And if you've got a really, <laughs> you've got a great coworker, they end up changing the diaper for you. But, but seriously, it, it, it makes the employees uh, get along well together and it, it just brings people closer together. And part of this program is after they've been in there for so long, you, you get a certificate, if you graduate and you're, you graduate from this program and you actually get a, a onesie from the city of Tyler that has a city of Tyler logo on there. So I, I know that sounds silly, but really uh, I, I think what we do to, to try to keep our employees is, is working and uh, yeah, and, and the thing about it is I hug everyone, I'm a hugger. And when I see these employees, I, I, I hug them, I love them. I mean, they're like family. And uh, that's what we need to, to have and, and keep. Yep, uh, great, great staff. Was the onesie idea from the coffee group at all? No, oh, y'all <laughs> don't own that one, okay. All right, so we came through COVID. Uh, a lot of entities, municipalities received ARPA money. Uh, what's the city done with it, doing with it? What are the plans? Well, we have received part of it, or we'll see the, the rest of it soon, but uh, we'll receive a total of $20.2 million. And uh, what are we going to do with it? There are specific things that we have to do with it. It's not just free range. And we're working on this list, and we, we have ideas. You know, we talk about the downtown project, which we'll talk about more later. We, we talk about the... the John Soles water line after John Soles, and maybe using some of that or using some of that for, for John Soles. But that's that's another one of those incentives. I mean, he he built a new plant in Alabama, and if he wants to expand here in Tyler, we he needs to have sufficient water supply. So we're we're looking at different things to do with with the ARPA money that that benefits the the city, but is also is a, a game changer and something that that like a, a, a new deal that, that people say, wow, that's in Tyler, Texas, but we're gonna use some of that money to make something wow. Yeah. And we wanna be respectful of everybody's time. I wanna kinda of keep moving on, on everything. Oh, by the way, on, on, your, on your thing, it says that this goes from 11.30 to 1.30, that's not gonna happen. So if, if you're thinking that- It's I'm gonna be, be shorter, here, right? Yeah, that's if you think I'm gonna be up here for projection. another, we have a clock up here this year too, by the way. We're going to be done in time for I don't know, what shit comes on at one o'clock on ABC. Uh, you're asking me that? Uh, <laughs> it's ABC. It's ABC though, so okay. I'm okay. less than a fan sometimes of, the, of our network. Anyway, so, so it's not the View. I know we that. Got a, we got. I get emails from ten to eleven 12, on that. We have twelve minutes. Yeah. We have twelve uh, minutes, and I got ten more pages. It's Good Morning America three for that hour. Thank you, whoever was in my ear. No, so <laughs> we're going through COVID, supply chain stuff, uh, the war uh, between Russia and Ukraine. We've got a unique relationship there uh, with Ukraine and our sister cities. What's the city's interface? Well, on, on March 16th, uh, Mickey Slump, Slump asked me to, to get involved with raising funds for the, cis, the city of Alenia uh, Gora. And so we said, sure. So we had this Zoom call with, the, with Mayor Wozniak over there. And the, the discussion, even though they're all the way on the other side of the world, the discussion was such that they, they needed our help. They had, at the time, 2,000 refugees that had come in. And they were trying to figure out what to, what to do with everyone. And I don't think it was the, the, the amount of money as much as, as the gesture. And we've been a sister city with with Eleni Agora for 30 years. And so we said, yeah, yes, we'll, we will help. And, and Mayor Wozniak at one point said, uh, 
a friend in need is a friend indeed. And so we, we for, for a week, we, we raised money and we ended up wiring over $30,000 uh, to this community. Thanks, That's sir. right. And some of the contributions were two dollars and fifty cents, and some were were large, but it was still it was an expression from the people of, of the city of Tyler that that we want to help not only people in our own community but people that live across the world. And, and Mayor Wisney had recently sent a, a video of thanks, saying that you know all of our citizens are not going to be able to come to Tyler to tell you thank you, but we as as the mayor. Wanted to say thank you to, to all the citizens of Tyler for for what you've done. So yeah. it was a it was a neat deal, very meaningful, uh, and, and kind of dovetailing along the the city budget, uh, the city theme for this year was called was called to serve and protect. Uh, how is it that budget document translated to action by the city? Well, the city of Tyler's logo is uh, called to serve, and, and it, it it's true, it, and especially in our police and fire department. And we want to make sure they, they have what they need. And some of these, whether you're police or fire, you may wonder, why would you want to be a policeman? You know, why would you want to subject yourself to not being trusted by some citizens? Why would you want to be someone videotaping you when you're doing a traffic stop, just see if you do anything right or wrong? Uh, I mean, it's, it's about transparency. But the reason why our policemen and firemen do what they do is, is I really do believe it, it's a calling. And recently, our, actually since 1995, the Tyler PD has been part of the, the CALEA accreditation process. And we went down to Orlando several months ago to be reaccredited. And only four, the top 4% of all police departments in the nation are a part of this process, and the city of Tyler is in the top 4%. And so to go down to Orlando and speak to the committee about PD and, and what they do and policies and procedures to, to follow to, to make sure we've got the best police force in, in the state and in the country, it, that, that's just, it's, it's so big. And to, and to watch those committee, meter, committee me members vote individually and vote for the city of Tyler to be reaccredited re is, is a big deal. That's neat. There's still some challenges facing our fire and, and police departments. What are some of those? Well, we, we continue to work to, to have more people come to the academy. We, we, we have more women and uh, Hispanics, but we're still lacking in the African-American population. 8% uh, of, of people on our force or African American, and we really need 22 to 3, 23 percent African American to really represent the community. So we're we're not getting them to the academies, but but that's the, one of the challenges that we have. You know, another challenge is, is mental health. You know, when you when you're a policeman or a fireman, and you deal with what you deal with, it, it affects your head. And we had a, a, a something happened recently where at the Tyson house, where it was on fire, and you've got, you've got our fire department in there, and here it is, it's, it's pitch black, and everybody's got these masks on, and they're trying to put out this fire, and all of a sudden you have three firemen that fall through a hole in the floor and go down however many feet and land in water, and, and you've had all these people that have been staying in this abandoned building. You know, who knows what's in the water? But these guys go underwater, and thank God they had their mask on and had the air going. But when you have to deal with that on a daily basis, you know, when you got a, a lady that, that is, is murdered in, in her apartment on South Broadway, and fortunately that guy turned himself in this morning, but when you walk in that room and you see this, this, this victim that gruesomely has is, is been murdered, this stuff gets in your head. And so we, we, we stand behind our police and fire any way we can, but we really want to be behind them regarding mental health. Um, <laughs> police and fire team members, you get them in the, on the team, and then they've got to build trust in the communities. Uh, what, are the, what do they do? What's some of that outreach? Well, it, well it's about accountability and, 
and what we do in the city, it, it, it's fun. We do these church and community events where we go to different churches throughout the, the city, and the police are there, the firemen are there, and the community shows up, and we have a free lunch, and people walk around and, and mingle, but ask questions to our police officers and, and fire firemen, and, and this is what we need, this is what we want, and there's communication. Uh, we have National Night Out where there's actually over 100 parties throughout the entire city, and we all go to these parties, and, and people are cooking in their backyards. Uh, if there's anybody here from Net Health, sorry, but I'm sure nobody has permits. <laughs> uh, but we, we, everybody cooks in their in their backyards, and it's a time for people to come together. And, and you know, coffee with a cop. You got the the fire station, the, the firemen that, that give tours on their fire trucks. So there's all kinds of, of things we do in the community to create interaction. This just fun and uh, for everybody just to get to know each other. Yep. Uh, that type of outreach also gets down uh, it really so much on the streets. Homelessness is a big concern. The city's got a, a concerted effort to address our homelessness. We do. We, we recently hired Johnny Green to be our, our homeless coordinator, which is one of the best moves we, we've made, and that's something that Jimmy Toller, Chief Toller, really wanted to do. And, and you know, homelessness is it's real. It's it's here in Tyler, and and as I said in the video, uh, Johnny Green he he knows the homeless. He, he knows them by name. He knows where they live, uh, and he he knows the the resources that are available. Whether it's Highway 80, Gateway to Hope, Salvation Army, and he helps place people in in these categories. In 2019, we do a homeless count every January, and I participate in this count every year. We go to Gateway to Hope, Highway 80, Salvation Army, we go to the tent cities, and we count the, the, the homeless. And in 2019, we were at 301, 2020, 325, and this year, it was 262. And I can promise you, we, had, we did not count everybody. It, you can't find everybody, but we did find one of the tent cities that had 20 tents. And when you see people out in the woods, there are many women, children, men. It, it's, it, it's, it's, it, you know, it covers everything. But what Johnny has done is, well, let me say this. We don't know why the number's down to 262. Is it, become of the, is it because of the camping ban that went in effect on September the 1st of last year? Is it Johnny Green and being personally involved? Is it our nonprofits that are having more success? But when you go from the 300s to 262, I, th I think we're going into the, the right direction. Yep. Shifting gears a little bit, still in law enforcement, cybercrime, another emerging field for that group. What's Tyler doing to combat that? Well, as you can imagine, a lot of the crime these days involves computers and iPhones and, and people getting on the dark web. Yeah, you know, it's funny, I, I got online yesterday and I, I Googled, what's the dark web? Because I don't even know what it is. <laughs> And, and all of a sudden, I, I'm, I got all this stuff coming up. And it's, it's this special place you go, and you have to, you're invited in, and, and it's this, this whole underground world. And, and then all of a sudden, my mouse is not working on my computer. And, <laughs> and now I've got computer issues. But, but, but sir, you know, the, this forensics guy that, that we, we called got, him up immediately. Yeah. Now, uh, I, 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 you, you should probably never Google dark web. <laughs> But, but in reality, the, the new officer, this is what he's going to do. He's going to be researching people's phones and tablets and computers, and that's where a lot of crime takes place, whether it's sex trafficking, uh, child pornography, what have you. Uh, and if, if you think that, that if a policeman gets your phone and he doesn't know your four-number four code to get in your phone, he can, he can get in your phone. So, so be careful where you go. That's it. So. All right, so a lot of ground covered in the video, uh, but let's shift to look forward a little bit. What's, uh, what's teed up? What's going to be completed? What's being started in the, uh, the next few months? Well, this is, this is the best part. I've got one minute. It's, we're going to run long, okay? Ten minutes, we'll be done. Uh, this is what I call the, the east-west corridor, and I'm going to start with the Rose Complex. You know, $28 million facility, uh, 42,000 square feet, uh, you put that with 
the Mayfair and the Rose Garden will be at 60,000 square feet of, of meeting space. It, 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 it's a gym, and we toured it Monday, and it's coming together, and we're going to have conferences and conventions from people all over the country at this new space. One of the things that is funny is, is when we, we approved this about a year ago, and I don't know what the, we, this was not strategic, but our timing on this has been perfect. We, we got a, a, a good interest rate. We, we, we've come up with a real creative way to, to fund the project. The supply issued. We've, yesterday we approved ordering tables and chairs, and we ordered things early to make sure they're here on time for the opening. But everything is just it's, it's gone it's gone very well and so we're excited about opening in uh, November or so uh, we were shooting for no, uh, October but it may be a little bit later but it really is going to plan the other thing that's, that's mentioned in the video is downtown in hiring tool design mm -hmm. they came in from Orlando and talked to a lot of people in the community and 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 got input and and People don't like change, and this is going to this this plan is going to freak some people out. And part of it is 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 narrowing down some of the streets downtown, uh, widening the sidewalks, creating more uh, seating space for for restaurants. It's going to be about uh, having more trees, uh, connectivity, benches, lighting, uh, having a, a, a safer atmosphere, uh, connecting. You know where the, all the apartments are going to be down by City Hall to downtown, and what's going to take place is, is huge. Would I like to, to have some of that ARPA money spent on downtown? You bet I would. You know, but it's going to we're going to get some pushback, and it's usually going to be pushback from people that are got white hair, like Mike. Uh, but it's going to be something that we work through. But it's going to it's going to be great. The the, the last thing that. And when I talk about this east-west corridor, I really do mean it. And the, the other thing is the new medical school. And Dr. Willis and, and everything that's going on with that. The, the uh, construction is going to start fairly soon, take three years or so to, to, to get it done. You know, I, I hear their speculation on the location. I'm not going to say for sure where it's going to be because I don't think it's been approved by the the, the Board of Regents. You know, if I was a, a betting man, I'd probably say it's going to be on Beckham and Lake, but I don't know for sure. I, did I say that right? Um, but the thing that's so fun, you know, the first class will consist of, of 40 students, and they're going to get a, 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 a free ride for their four years, and that's in, yeah. in, in part because of the Fair Foundation and for the money that they gave. And, you know, it'll pay for their tuition, admission, and fees. And, and the, the goal of, of Dr. Willis is for these people to go through this program and to once they get through to, is to stay in this area and to stay in this community and become doctors mm -hmm. here in the city of Tyler or somewhere close. So I'm, I'm extremely excited about the project. And because of the way that, that Dr. Willis is trying to set this up, you know, these, these future doctors may be able to get through with, with, with this program with zero or low debt load versus having a half million dollars in debt. And because of that whole scenario, it opens up the possibilities of what kind of doctor they can become. If you gotta pay for a half million dollars in, in debt load, you need to be a, a brain surgeon so you can pay it back. Well, if you don't have that debt load, then maybe you can be a, a pediatrician or something where you make a, a different amount of money. Because you need more doctors, you need a, 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 a different level of, of care. So, you know, I will, I, I'm going to do this, Dr. Willis, even whether you like it or not. Will you stand up so we can give you a hand? And it's, it's a big deal. Dr. Willis, is, he's a new neighbor, and uh, my wife, for some reason, she loves doing this. When he moved in, we went and took him some sister-to-sister -sister cookies. And then I, it wasn't a month later that Dr. Willis has a tree that's down in his yard. And he called me and said, we help me with the tree? So uh, we got help to get the tree cut out of the street. And, 
And then Dr. Wells was kind enough to bring me a, a lamp made out of a whiskey bottle. So, <laughs> sorry, I probably shouldn't have mentioned that. I, 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 you know, my only complaint was the, the whiskey bottle was empty, and so. Oh. <laughs> Had to get but, there but I appreciate you being such a good neighbor. That's great. Well, that east-west corridor is, is really taking shape. You've got a lot of things that you're passionate about. What are some of those projects that just really light you up? Well, one of them is parks, as you know, and I'm not going to get too much into parks because people say I talk parks too much. But we're going to do a, a lot at Pollard Park, uh, which, which is, you know, we're going to be doing stuff for the basketball courts, bathrooms, new pavilion. Nobly Young, new pavilion, new equipment, uh, walking trails that we approved yesterday. Lindsay Park, we're going to have some new signage. So we continue to invest in our parks. And the Burkeville Park, as you know, here I'm elaborating on parks. I said, what are you going to do it? But in 2014, when we started the Burkeville Park project, prior to that, we had spent almost nothing on parks. And since 2014 to today, we spent nearly $10 million on parks. People, people, <laughs> you know, people during COVID, what'd they use? They used our parks. And fortunately, they had been done and, and done in time, and that was just where they gravitated to. Yeah. Um, so parks, uh, huge point for you. At, at this point, if you had to identify what you see this council's legacy will be? Well, we've had this, this book we've worked on since 2007. This has been around Tyler First. In the six years that I was on council, I had Tyler First sitting on my desk. And it's about this thick. And it, it's not something that you read when you go to bed. But so Tyler First is kind of the comprehensive plan for the city of Tyler. But to me, it, it never has been a, a living document. It's just a, a bunch of paper in a binder. And so what we've really done over the last two years is, is we've dug into this book. And we've, we've assigned two councilmen plus myself to be on different committees, whether it's infrastructure, quality of life, it, it, all the different things that are included in Title First. And we've drilled down and, and we've become, we, we get in the weeds with staff. And so when we think of, of things that have come out of our discussions, the Bricks, the Bricks Creek, uh, the Brick Street crew mm -hmm. was one of the things that came out of it. The, the discussion of a fire training facility, uh, dealing with derelict buildings, buildings that are, need to be demolished. We've, just, we've talked about this for years, but we haven't done anything about it. But because these committees have drilled down and gotten into it, we now have, uh, we've now condemned the Tyson House building that I used as an example a minute ago with our firemen. And, but these are things that we've, we've decided that Tyler First is a living document. Tyler First is something that we need to, to work with, work through, and make it part of our comprehensive plan and, and use it more. And, and, and it's working and, and every councilman is involved intimately with, with Tyler First. Yep. Last question. How will the Tyler of tomorrow be different from what we see today? Well, the Tyler of tomorrow is going to enhance what you see today. And Tyler, we're in a, a state of transformation. And uh, it, to me, it, it, it's a, a great state of transformation. It, it, it's exciting. Whether you talk about the east-west corridor, talking about people moving here, talking about just all the things going on, it, it, it just, it's an exciting time to, to live here. And, you know, as mayor, you know, I, I, I'm so honored and so proud. I mean, to look out there and see 600 people that, that care about your city, that you're here. You know, I'm just proud to, to be mayor. And, and I, I know this next four years, if I get elected again in two years, this next four years is going to go by fast. And, uh, I think part of the reason it's going by so fast is I'm loving it and it's fun and, and uh, appreciate you know, like being here. Yep. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Mayor Don Warren. Yeah, we've already cut us off. <laughs> it's 110. We nailed it. 10 minutes late.
It's like it's one of the parking meters downtown. They cut you. Yeah, but if you you, you, you can get a ticket. If you, I got a ticket downtown. So if I can get a ticket downtown, anybody can get a ticket downtown. As a matter of fact, okay. Once I, once I did get the ticket, I went up to the guy that gave me the ticket, and I said to him, it wasn't Adam, what's the guy's name, Ryan? I went up to him and I said, can, you just gave the mayor a freaking ticket. And his response was, don't have me fired. <laughs> but so... Be sure and feed the, the parking meter. Okay, cut, cut this now off. Cut the mics. Cut it off. <laughs> Would we all agree this is a great way to get some really good information? <laughs> Thank you to our two sponsors, Gallup Morgan Petty, Half and Associates. Thank you to Green Acres again for providing this awesome facility. Thank you for coming. I'd like to announce our next meeting date. A luncheon is August 9th with the kickoff luncheon. Thank you for coming. Have a great day.